Hi there. Yes, please, please come in. Yes, welcome to Breathe Easy Travel Agency, your source for tension-free trips. Uh, how can I help you today? But yes, please sit down, yes. Okay, you'd like to plan a trip, of course, if you've come to the right place. Uh, where were you thinking of going? We have all sorts of destinations available. I'm not sure, okay. Well, what kind of trips have you enjoyed in the past? Okay, you love theme parks, so do I, yes. Oh, okay, when you were a kid, your family used to go to Disney World. Well, when's the last time you were there? Oh, okay, it's been some time. Well, have you ever considered going back? Oh, well, no, I know you're all grown up now, and, <laughs> and it's, you know, the happiest place on earth for kids, but... It also has quite a bit to offer for adult travelers, especially uh, if you grew up going there and you have the nostalgia factor. You're kind of interested in that? Okay. No, the trip, a Disney trip can actually be um, quite relaxing. It's definitely a nice escape. And if you plan things correctly, um, yeah, you, you get there and it's basically Hakuna Matata. No worries. You can plan everything in advance. I can help you with that. And then you're on your way to, for a stress-free um, vacation. It can be a wonderful escape. So, let's just look a little bit at some of your plans. Um, what dates were you planning? What time of year? Okay, sometime in the fall. That's great because... Um, the weather in the Orlando Kissimmee area at that point is starting to cool off a little. It still can be very warm, but not you're not going to get the intense heat of the summer. Uh, I would suggest either sometime in maybe late September, because September is their off season and you won't see the crowds that you would see in the summer or around the holidays. Or else, uh, October is all right, but I prefer if you're going to go later in the year, I would suggest November, perhaps a week or two before Thanksgiving. You don't want to go right around Thanksgiving because Thanksgiving weekend will be incredibly crowded and also more expensive. But uh, if it really depends because they Disney goes all out for um, both Halloween, mostly at the Magic Kingdom, and... Uh, Christmas and winter holidays, and for that they decorate throughout. So, um, are you more into kind of you know, spooky Halloween type fun, or would you rather go somewhere and enjoy some early holiday cheer? Ah, okay, holidays. Then, yes, I would suggest either November or even early December. You don't want to go too close to Christmas, but November? Okay, yeah, most of the, the Halloween Let's see, the, the holiday decorations will be going up in November, so I would suggest how about a, a, the week or two before Thanksgiving? Because by then they'll already have the, the Christmas decorations and things in full swing. Okay, let me just go ahead and bring up those dates. Right here. Mm-hmm. Bring up a calendar. So I am looking at, are we looking at weekend travel or weekday? Because weekday travel is much um, better in terms of a Disney trip if you can manage it with, you know, with your work schedule and yeah, and you, it would be, okay, just the two of you, no kids going, okay. No, that's actually a really great way to take a Disney trip, and I'll show you. I'll show you all the things that I'm talking about. Um, we're looking for maybe four nights, he said. Okay. Okay, I'm going to suggest the week in between, like the week right before Thanksgiving, because that falls in between... Veterans Day, which some people will have 
um, some holiday time for that. And also, you know, it's before Thanksgiving. So I'm thinking, let's see, four nights. Maybe Monday through Friday. So staying Monday through Thursday and leaving on Friday. That would be November 17th through November 21st. And will you need um, airfare? No, you're going to drive. Yeah, we're not that far away. Okay, great. So, I'm looking at since... Now, are you a resident of Florida? I'm assuming, since you're here and we are in Florida, but you are great because you can get some great discounts as a Florida resident, both on your, um, your resort stay and also on your park admission. Um, what kind of budget are we looking at? Okay, okay, pretty open-ended, but leave it be below that. Okay, well, you can work with that very easily now, um, especially without airfare. Now, Disney, I'm, do you want to stay on the grounds? Because Disney, you know, people think of Disney World as the Magic Kingdom, and really Disney World is a much huger area than that. Um, there's four theme parks. There's the Magic Kingdom, Epcot, Disney Studios, and Disney's Animal Kingdom. And beyond that, they have a number of on-site resorts. And the resorts will be a little more expensive than most of the Orlando area hotels you might choose otherwise, but they do come with a lot of perks. They make the overall experience much easier. So it's definitely something to consider. Uh, did you ever stay on site when you used to come with your family? No, okay. Okay, yes, mm-hmm. So I, I'm going to suggest we at least look at some of the on-site resorts because some of them will actually be surprisingly affordable. I am seeing right now that as a Florida resident, you can get 30% off um, the rack rates for that time of year if you're staying uh, on a weeknight. And since you, your nights will be all weeknights, that would work out fantastically for you. And they do have resorts at all different budget levels. Uh, if you're looking to save some money, you can get a room at one of the all-star resorts for, uh, let's say it's $90, and that's before the Florida resident discount. A weeknight is, yes, $9.90, so that's not bad, especially when you add in the, the Florida resident discount. And the All-Stars, they are very heavily themed. There's a movies one, a music one, and a sports one. They're very heavily themed, and they are very family-oriented. They're not quite as upscale and classic as some of the um, deluxe resorts. They are considered value resorts, and they... So they, they, they do lack a certain charm that the more deluxe resorts have, but, again, if you're going to be spending most of your time out and about, they're still very nice places to stay. The rooms are spacious and always clean, and the, every, everything at Disney is going to be you know, a step above what you typically find on vacation. Um, oh, the other nice thing about staying on site is the transportation system within the Disney grounds. Um, it's mostly bus-based. They constantly have strings of buses running between the resorts and each of the attractions. Um, depending on the resort you're staying in, you may also be able to take boats to certain areas or even the monorail. Okay, yeah, you remember the monorail from when you were a kid. Do you remember it going through some of the resorts? Because you could park and take the monorail into the Magic Kingdom. Yes, it would go through the Contemporary. Mm -hmm. Yes, and, and also in other tracks, it will go through the Polynesian and the Grand Floridian. The Grand Floridian, yes, that's beautiful. I believe that is still their most expensive resort. Yeah. Yes, the difference, I told you, $90 for a, uh, a value resort like the All-Stars, 
um, a night at the Grand Floridian is going to start at 488. Now, the nice thing is uh, the deluxe resorts have a 40% off Florida resident discount on weeknights uh, during the time of year you're looking at. So that may be something to consider as well, but you know, it depends on your budget. There are on also a number of resorts in between fairly moderate resorts, which are the Caribbean Beach, uh, Port Orleans, Coronado Springs, and those are running right now about 170 a night with the 30% discount. I mean, you know, before the 30% discount. Uh, and then you have different deluxe resorts. Now, the Animal Kingdom Lodge, I don't know if you've heard of that one, but that's a very nice deluxe resort that is um, much more reasonably priced than, say, the Grand Floridian. Uh, it is near Animal Kingdom, near the theme park, and it is the, it's African themed. It has several wonderful restaurants, and some of the rooms and all of the balconies in the public areas uh, overlook uh, a miniature kind of Serengeti plain where you can actually see uh, some of the animals that they feature at Animal Kingdom. You'll often see giraffes, you might see zebras, uh, ostriches, there are different areas and it's a really nice place to just kind of sit and look out over this little Serengeti. And the animals are all very well cared for and it's a, it's a very nice place to stay and I'm seeing right now um, before the 40% discount for the deluxe resorts, it's two eighty four dollars a night. And that, then, let's see how much that would be with a discount. Two eighty four, dollars and that's with tax already. So you would be paying uh, a little over $170 a night. Probably a little less than that once tax is adjusted. So your entire hotel bill would be about $680. Okay, it's not that bad for four nights uh, in a very nice resort. Again, that's a luxe resort, so the theming is really second to none. It's, it's beautiful. I can show you some pictures of the resort. Um, they do have bus transportation to all the parks as well as the downtown Disney area and the water parks and that sort of thing. Um, it's just a nice thing because you park your car, since you're driving in, you park your car and you never have to drive anywhere else. You can just get on the bus. But if you would like to drive to the parks instead to avoid waiting online for the buses, uh, you get compliment, as a Disney resort guest, you get complimentary parking. So it leaves your options open. Let me see what else is available. Um, oh, the Wilderness Lodge, which is um, kind of in the Magic Kingdom resort area, is uh, also $289 a night before the discount. And that is another beautiful one. It is a themed more like the Pacific Northwest. And um, you can take the transportation from there is... It has the buses, of course, but it also has um, boat transportation to certain areas. I believe you can take a boat directly to the Magic Kingdom. Yeah, that's a nice one. And, oh, should we look at that one? Okay. Yeah, that's one I would definitely recommend. Yeah, the Contemporary is um, three thirty-six a night before your discount, so it's a little more. But uh, personally. I enjoy the theming of the Wilderness Lodge so much more than the Contemporary, which is, you know, the Contemporary has been there for decades, and even though it's very iconic, it tends to feel a little dated to me. So I suggest, yeah, if you're interested in the Wilderness Lodge, let's go ahead and look at that one. Because I do see uh, some room availabilities. Mm -hmm. 
me see what views they offer. So let's see, a standard view, that's your 289 a night, which is, you know, not the greatest view, but I can often get an upgrade. So let's see what else they have. They also have woods view, which is 314 a night. So if the view is important enough for you to want to pay extra, because it's, it is very nice to overlook um, the woods instead of a rooftop or service area. Actually, let me put in the standard view and let me see what I can do. Hmm. Okay, I'm seeing those dates and <laughs> I can get you a free upgrade to Woods View. Sound good? Okay, let me go ahead and temporarily grab that so nobody else books it while we are working. Okay, so we have the four nights, the Monday through Thursday nights, so you'd be leaving on Friday with the, the upgrade to a wood, woodland view at the Wilderness Lodge. So that is fantastic. I think you'll really enjoy that. Um, do you have any other special requests for the room? Okay. Okay, great. Um, now, I'm assuming you don't have any kind of admission tickets to Disney already. Okay. Uh, a lot of people in this area actually have annual or seasonal passes. And that may actually be something for you to look at because I'm thinking now that you have five days potentially to use, five days of admission. And Disney admission prices have gone up and up and up. Believe me, it's, yeah, I believe it is $99 for a one day, one park pass these days. And that is before tax. And that is to only get into one park. Now for you, you can get multi-day passes, and it becomes cheaper per day. You can add park hopping. But for you, since you are a Florida resident, I am going to suggest we look at um, Florida resident um, seasonal passes. Let me bring that up. Um, how a seasonal pass works is this one is only available for Florida residents. It's a special deal. Uh, it has certain blackout dates, but those dates are not going to affect you. Uh, it does not include uh, access to things like water parks. So if you're interested in those, we may need to look at a different kind of ticket. No water parks? Okay. That's smart because in November, you're, you're not sure if it's going to be warm enough anyway. I mean, it usually is, but sometimes we get a cold front, and yeah. Okay, because of seasonal pass, the blackout dates right now are June 9th through August 14th, because that one just ended. Uh, December 18th through January 2nd, which is when it really gets crazy for the holidays. March 28th through April 10th, which is spring break time. And June 8th through August 13th next year. And so that's... Yeah, so I mean those dates are not going to affect this trip at all and a seasonal pass allows for park hopping. It does not give you free parking at the parks, but that's okay because you'll be on the grounds and as a resort guest you automatically have complimentary parking everywhere. And it is uh, $319 for one adult. Uh, but the neat thing is, is that they allow Florida residents to make payments on it, which means you pay a deposit of $106, which is about the price of a one-day, one-park ticket. And after that, you pay uh, $19.48 a month. And so that, it, it takes down the yeah, initial cost of a trip and lets you space out a little of it. And no, no... Um, interest or anything on that, you're paying the same price with the monthly payments as you would be if you bought the whole thing at once. You can pay for the full thing at once,
dollars if you'd rather, but the monthly payments are there as an option. And that way you would have, except for those blockout dates, you would have admission to the parks for the rest of the year. For this, I mean, for the entire year to follow. So if you got the pass in November, you could go anytime through next November if you have a good time and want to go back. And even if you don't go back, you've still saved money over buying your admission separately. So that's what I'm going to recommend because um, you can also get packages and that sort of thing for you know, where you get the resort and uh, your admission and other perks, but those are very much geared toward uh, families and toward out-of-state residents who are going to be paying a lot more for a similar vacation. So I try to get people the most, you know, the most perks and benefits as possible, um, while also paying the least, because it can get very pricey to stay at Disney. So. I am going to suggest a seasonal pass for each of you. Does that sound good? Okay, and would you like to pay for the whole thing up front along with your room, or would you rather space it out? Space it out, okay. Yeah, it does, it makes it a little easier. I mean, you figure instead of having to come up with over $600 all at once, you pay $212, and then you make the monthly payments, so you'll have uh, a little under Forty dollars a month for the next twelve months. That so makes it a little easier to budget in. Yeah. Okay, I'm going to add in one of those for each of you. Okay. Yep, that's done. Now uh, we can talk about the parks themselves and some of the other options. Uh, are you interested in uh, dining options? Okay. Mm -hmm. Now, Disney has a variety of dining options uh, in the parks and in the resorts. You can do everything from, you know, a quick lunch from a counter service restaurant or, you know, a food cart to a multi-course, very fancy, sit-down dinner. Um, you know, it's, it's either of those extremes and everything in between. And what I suggest is that you kind of do some of each. You plan several nice sit-down meals and also do some counter service because some of the counter service places are very, very good. And I can give you suggestions on each of those. Um, the best place, if you're looking for dining options, is probably Epcot, because Epcot has the World Showcase. It is split up into two areas, the park, and half of the park is Future World, where, you know, that's the more typical Epcot stuff that you think of, like the, um, yes, the big golf ball, that area. But behind that, there is the Seven, not the Seven Seas Lagoon. Uh, probably called the World Showcase Lagoon, I don't even remember, but it's a, it's a lake, and around the lake are situated a number of pavilions, each representing a different country. And each of those places has a nice uh, sit-down restaurant, it has you know more fast food counter service options, uh, and also it, you know, okay, yeah, um, let me look that up for you. We can go over each of them. Because I find that, you know, when you're there as a kid, when you're at Disney as a kid, you love the Magic Kingdom, you love all the fast rides and all that. But when you go back as an adult, you tend to appreciate um, more of the the pace of Epcot. You know, it's a nice place to stroll around, have a nice bite to eat, maybe get something to drink. Um, there are a lot of shops to look in, and there are definitely rides if you want to do rides, but uh, it tends to be a slower pace than the frenetic craziness of the Magic Kingdom. And so I do suggest that going to Disney as, as adults, 
that you definitely spend some time in Epcot. Now let's see. Now some of the restaurants I would suggest, it depends on what kind of food you like, but um, uh, the Mexican Pavilion has La Cantina de San Angel, I believe that is. They have several different ones. It may not be the Cantina, it may be the La Hacienda de San Angel. But their restaurant, inside the pavilion, their sit-down restaurant, is absolutely beautiful. It is designed to look like you're sitting out on a patio under a moonlit sky with stars twinkling above. And it's just very festive and beautiful and there's a boat ride in the Mexican pavilion that goes right by the restaurant, so you can watch the people go by in the little boats. And San Angelian, that's it. They also have some counter service, and those were the other things I was looking at. San Angelian. Uh, if you like, if you enjoy Mexican food, kind of upscale, that is one to consider. Now, they also have... The United Kingdom Pavilion has one of my personal favorites, the Rose and Crown Pub. Uh, you can get all sorts of traditional uh, British foods there. And also, yes, also a nice selection of um, British ales and beers, which is always a nice thing after walking around at a crowded park for a while. Uh, that one's very good. The fish and chips is just a die for there. Um, if you enjoy German food, they have the Beer Garden in Germany. Um, Chefs de France in France is um, really nice. The quiche there is fantastic. And it just, it looks like it has all the charm of a cute little restaurant in Paris. It is a very, it's very pretty. Now, if you enjoy steak, the La Cellier Steakhouse in Canada is probably the most popular restaurant in all of Disney. Uh, it's like short of the character dining that they have at some of the other parks. Um, but it's very difficult to get in there. But if you would like, I would be able to check right now and see if they can um, book you. They offer bookings a certain number of months in advance, and I believe we are within the, the limit right now. Uh, China has the Nine Dragons restaurant, which is always good. Um, Morocco has restaurant Marrakesh, and that's very good. I don't know if you've had Moroccan food, but it's, it's the first place I ever had couscous. <laughs> and yeah, they offer kebabs and that sort of thing. That's very good. Shall we try to make a few reservations? Now with the reservations, they're, you know, you can always cancel them. It's just nice to kind of know they're there. So I would suggest, if you enjoy steak, I would suggest we try to get you into Le Cellier. And also, oh, you'd like to try Morocco's restaurant. All right. So let me try to get you into Le Cellier, let's say on Tuesday. You get there on Monday, you probably do something fairly quick Monday evening. But maybe Tuesday can be a nice relaxing day. Okay, let me see if I can do that because it is very tough to get into a cellier unless you make your reservations in advance. So that would be Tuesday the 18th. And yes, I actually do see an opening at 8.30. And I know that's a bit late for some people. But it's a really nice thing to go to Epcot and stay late and, um, you know, have a late dinner, which means that by the time you get out of the restaurant, the park itself is closed and it's not crowded and it's a really nice stroll to kind of walk through the park when it's emptying out. Oh no, they don't mind if you're there after hours. Um, they know people are still finishing up meals and things, so they're not going to chase you out. 
They did chase me out once, but it was because I stayed until almost midnight and the park had closed at nine. <laughs> so yes, let me go ahead and book that because that will be a rare treat. I recommend the um, bacon wrapped filet. Unless you are a big prime rib fan because their prime rib is fantastic as well. And either way, um, do enjoy the um, house-made breadsticks. They're, they're quite famous for that. And also, I suggest starting with a bowl of their cheddar cheese soup. It is extremely, extremely popular. Okay. Great. And let me see what else we can get you in. Uh, Marrakesh, the restaurant Marrakesh, should be easier to book because it's not quite as popular as... Uh, the steakhouse. So let me see, maybe Thursday evening? Thinking dinner for that? That sounds good. Okay. Okay, I can get you in there at either 6 30 or 8 45 if you'd like to do another later evening meal. 8 45, okay? Fantastic. Okay, now there are nice restaurants in the other parks as well, so I'm going to actually, I'm going to suggest that at some point, so maybe uh, the Brown Derby at Disney Studios is very nice. It is a, yes, it's a replica of the original Brown Derby in Hollywood, and that is of course where the um, cop salad was invented. And that is a very nice place for dinner as well, if you're interested in that. But um, Disney Studios also has some more fun and offbeat options. I'm, okay, I would suggest one night having dinner at the Brown Derby, but I would also suggest at some point having lunch, perhaps, at the Sci-Fi Dining Theater. That is a very unique restaurant, and it's... It's more casual than some of the sit-down restaurants, but it is built in a very large building. It's made to look like an old-time drive-in movie theater, and the seats are actually set into cars. And you watch clips of old sci-fi movies while you're eating. And they have great things like burgers and fries and that sort of wonderful milkshakes. And that, that's kind of a nice place to go for lunch. You get out of the sun for a little while. It's nice and dark in there. Uh, okay, should we do that one for our lunch? Maybe on... What about if you have lunch before you leave on Friday? You'd have one, you know, one final nice meal. That sounds good. Okay. Let me put that in. That should be easy to get. Okay, I'm seeing 1 o'clock on that Friday. Okay, we'll book you your car right now. There you go. All done. And were you interested in the Brown Derby? Because I was going to suggest you have um, either Monday or Wednesday for dinner still. So. Okay, let's put that in for Monday. That way you can arrive on Monday, settle in, uh, head out to the Disney Studios, have a nice stroll around, and have a nice dinner. And then if you're interested, that will be at... I'm seeing at 7 o'clock, oh, and I'm also seeing a deal that you can get a package that includes dinner at the Brown Derby and then preferred seating at Phantasmic, which is their nighttime water and light show, which is quite a neat show to see. And it looks like it only adds $10 a person for the preferred seating. And what you do is you have dinner, and then you head over to the arena where Fantasmic is held. And instead of waiting in a huge line and being herded along with a couple thousand other people, you are taken through a rear entrance and given a very nice, given very nice seats with a very great, a great view. So for ten dollars more a person, I think that's quite a good deal. It saves you so much time and so long to wait in line. That sounds good? Okay, great. Let's go ahead and put that in. Okay. And let's see. We still have Wednesday night to book then. 
and for that, I would like to suggest one of the restaurants at the resorts instead. And you, yeah, um, now Wilderness Lodge has some very nice restaurants, but my personal favorite and the one that I tend to uh, suggest to people either for breakfast or for dinner is called Boma at Animal Kingdom Lodge. It's a fantastic buffet, and they have a mix of really delicious, you know, traditional American foods, and also um, African dishes, and they're just fantastic. And the dessert pot is just, I could just, you know, eat my entire dinner at the dessert pot. That's how great it is. <laughs> so I'm going to suggest, they have a wonderful breakfast, too. It's completely different spread for breakfast or for lunch and one thing that happens at Disney World is that you end up booking so many meals that you're not hungry for your next meal for you <laughs> because your last one was so big so are you interested in that one for either breakfast or dinner okay dinner on Wednesday that's fantastic um, I'm going to suggest a pretty late time that way you can stay at a park until it closes and then head over to Animal Kingdom Lodge uh, the best way to do that would either be to drive directly to the lodge, or if you don't want to drive, um, I would suggest taking a bus from whatever park you're at to the lodge, and then after you're done with dinner, taking a bus from the lodge to downtown Disney. And from there, you can either grab a bus back to your resort, or you can shop for a little while and relax and... and Okay, yeah, make that a slightly later night. Yeah. Okay, let me go ahead and put that in. Okay, I'm seeing 9.30 for dinner. Is that too late? No? Okay. That's great because the parks will mostly close at 8 or 9 on that night. And that way you can stay till close and then head over to Animal Kingdom Lodge. And if you get there early, just hang out for a bit. It's a beautiful resort to explore. And they have a nice big gift shop if you're interested in doing some shopping. And the cake got you in for Boma at 9.30. And that way you can head over to downtown Disney. And parts of downtown Disney stay open until 2 in the morning. So if you wanted to hang out there for a while. Yeah, okay. Downtown Disney is under some construction right now in kind of in the central area. Um, that's where they used to have their nightclubs. Uh, they, it was a, a block of nightclubs called Pleasure Island, and they did close that a number of years ago, which was a shame because it was one of the really fun things for grown-ups at Disney World to do. And that area is under construction, but there are still plenty of restaurants and some uh, bars and places to go and lots and lots of shops. You'll see at Disney, there's plenty of shopping to do at all times. <laughs> so, let's go ahead and put that in. Okay. Now, for your, um, you know, quicker meals, since you'll want to have some counter service meals that won't be quite as filling, or expensive as these sit-down meals, um, I would suggest doing counter service at um, at Magic Kingdom. Unless you're interested in character dining, do you do you like? Yeah, that's where the the various characters in costume come and basically bother you while you're trying to eat. <laughs> no, that's yeah, that's really more of a it's more popular with families. Yeah. And so, okay, I'm going to avoid those and just give you a few ideas. Uh, for quick sit down, Columbia Harbor House is extremely good, especially if the weather cools off at all in uh, that week in November. They have excellent um, clam chowder. Comes in a bread bowl. And also things like... Um, fish strips, things like that. Um, for regular old just counter service burgers and, and that sort of thing, um, 
in Tomorrowland, there's Cosmic Rays Starlight Cafe. And that's kind of cute. There's an audio animatronic uh, alien doing a little show while you're there having your, your lunch. Um, there are plenty of little places to get snacks and that sort of thing all throughout the park. Um, let's see. And I do suggest at one point, especially if it's a warm afternoon, to stop by uh, Aloha Isle, which is just a small little counter service place in Adventureland, and get yourself a Dole Whip, which is um, pineapple ice cream. It's a very popular thing at, um, at the park. Oh yes, it's delicious. I suggest getting the pineapple swirled with vanilla. Because that is just, yeah. I'm not making myself hungry. <laughs> um, let me see where else I su should suggest. Um, at the Hollywood Studios, um, if you're looking for fast food, I suggest... Um, if you're looking for something that's kind of fun, I always enjoy the Pizza Planet Arcade. It's based on the arcade in Toy Story. Yes, yes, the Pizza Planet. Well, it's actually just a pizza place. I don't remember if it was an arcade in the movie. But, uh, yeah, it's based on Pizza Planet from Toy Story. And the pizza is good. I mean, it's fast food pizza. But it's a nice place to take a break. And if you want to then play a few arcade games, they have plenty of them. It's fun, yeah. Yeah, I mean, it all depends on whether you're trying to have more of a, a grown-up experience or, you know, kind of let your inner kid out. Now, there's also Mama Melrose's Ristorante Italiano, which is, that's a sit-down place, but it tends to be not quite as fancy um, as some of the other sit-down restaurants, and they have excellent, excellent flatbread pizzas there. If you're looking for something that's a little nicer than Pizza Planet, uh, I suggest Mama Melrose's. And even though that's a sit-down, usually you can, get, especially since you'll be there in off-season, you can usually walk up and get a table within 15 or 20 minutes. So I don't think you need to make reservations for that one, but if you do decide to try it, yeah, if you're in that area and you're hungry, I suggest it, definitely. Now, I'm just seeing if there's anywhere else I su should suggest. I don't think so. But then, of course, right in your resort, there will be a food court and also nice restaurants. Let me see. Yes, they have... Um, Wilderness Lodge has Artist Point, which is their nice sit-down. And also the Whispering Canyon Cafe. And then they have the Roaring Fork Snacks, which is for quicker things. Um, but I think you're pretty well set now. And I mean, any, anywhere you go will have wonderful dining options. So if you take some time to explore some of the other resorts, you'll find some great things. Yeah. Yeah, anywhere you go. Uh, Disney, years ago, probably when you were a kid, it was all about, you know, grabbing something fast and it wasn't very good and it just was, you know, theme park food. The kind of a bleh hamburger or hot dog. And yeah, mm -hmm. oh, I remember that too. And they definitely have improved things within the last 10 or 20 years. It's, it's light years ahead of where it used to be. Now... All right, now we can also go over the parks themselves if you would like, but I do have detailed brochures for each one, and it might be easier for you to review them at your own pace so that you can decide exactly um, which attractions you are most interested in. Yeah, it's you don't want to plan everything too much because then you're just sticking to a schedule and you're stressing yourself out over getting here or there in time. But it is nice to have some of the of your dining options set up. And yes, if you change your mind on any of those, yeah, mm -hmm, it's very easy to cancel. You can call the number that I will give you, or you can just speak to uh, 
any guest relations uh, Disney cast member. You can go to the guest relations area right at your resort, change reservations, cancel them, add them. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's very easy. Okay, then I think we're just about done. Are we set on this? The um, Monday through Friday, November 17th through 21st at the Wilderness Lodge with the free upgrade to a uh, woodland view. Mm -hmm. Okay, and we have two seasonal passes, which you'll pay the down payment for uh, with the balance for your the rest of your vacation. Okay, great. And then we have, yes, mm -hmm. and the reservations we've just made. I'll give you those on a separate printout, but I'm going to go ahead and book this. And right now, your deposit will be, let's see, make sure I get this. Deposit for today will be $379. That's the deposits on both tickets plus a deposit on the room. And then your balance, which you will um, be asked to pay when you check in on that Monday, will be. another 502 which will just be the balance on my room and uh, also we will put we'll need to put a credit card on your account for the monthly payments on the tickets okay great all right I'm going to print out all your information and I have this folder right here with details on all the parks and the water parks and the other attractions on the Disney grounds. Um, it gives more detailed information on the transportation options on the grounds since you will be a resort guest. And also I will include the printout of your reservations for dining. Great. And it also has some information here on um, Disney's Fast Pass system, which was recently overhauled. So I don't know if they had Fast Passes yet when you would go as a kid. No, okay. I believe it started about 10 or 15 years ago. And it's a very nice way to avoid long waits on some of the more popular rides and attractions. So definitely read up on that, find out how it works, and once you get the hang of it, it's very easy. Great, well, I think we are all set, and feel free to give us a call here if you have any questions. Um, otherwise, thank you so much for visiting us here at the Breathe Easy Travel Agency. Bye!